Is it possible that over-the-counter hearing aids are capable of performing just as well as prescription hearing aids? Well, we may have our answer. Hey guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, we're taking a look at some new research that may change the way that you view over-the-counter hearing aids. While hearing aids and amplifiers have been sold online for decades at this point, we finally have some new legislation that sets some guidelines for the performance of these devices. Essentially, this legislation created a new category of hearing aids called over-the-counter hearing aids. However, since over-the-counter hearing aids became an official category of devices back Back in 2022, they really haven't caught on. Now this could be for several reasons, including lack of awareness of this new over-the-counter category, over-the-counter hearing aid prices that are higher than were expected, confusion on which over-the-counter hearing aids would be appropriate for an individual, a lack of perceived benefit using over-the-counter hearing aids, or something else entirely. While we don't know for sure which one or more of these reasons is responsible for low adoption rates of over-the-counter hearing aids, a new study out of the University of Iowa and Vanderbilt University Medical Center may have an answer for us. But before we dive dive into the highlights of this study, do me a huge favor, click the like button. It really helps out the channel. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well. It is greatly appreciated. And a huge shout out to Starkey for sponsoring today's video. United States-based hearing aid manufacturer Starkey has been a leader in developing cutting-edge hearing aid technology since the 1970s. Not only are they widely regarded as one of the best custom hearing aid manufacturers, but they have also led the way when it comes to wireless Bluetooth streaming, battery life, and sensor technology including fall detection. Now they are pushing the envelope with what is possible using artificial intelligence inside of their Edge AI hearing aids. The Starkey Edge AI hearing aid utilizes Starkey's G2 neuroprocessor, which features a dedicated neural processing unit to handle the demands of their deep neural network that is fully integrated into their chip. Their deep neural network was trained with millions of real-world sound samples so it can differentiate between speech and background noise. This ultimately results in up to a 13 decibel signal-to-noise ratio improvement when you're in a noisy situation, which is massive. But don't take my word for it, just listen to the difference for yourself. Our goal at Starkey is to remove the fear from hearing aid users that they'll miss out on one of life's most important moments due to running out of battery life in their hearing aids. So if you struggle in background noise or you just want to make sure that you can hear your absolute best, Starkey should be at the top of your list of hearing aids to consider. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into this research out of the University of Iowa and Vanderbilt University Medical Center. This study, published in the Journal of American Medical Association, Otolaryngology, Head and Neck Surgery, looked to determine the impact of over-the-counter and prescription hearing aid service delivery models and different hearing aid technology levels. The study included 245 adults age 55 and older with mild to moderate hearing loss and no prior hearing aid use. It took place between February 2019 and December 2023. Each of the participants in this randomized clinical trial was placed into one of six different groups with three different service delivery models. These included a full service delivery model using prescription hearing aids fit by an audiologist following best practices, a partial service delivery model using over-the-counter hearing aids with an audiologist providing limited assistance, and a no service delivery model with over-the-counter hearing aids where participants received no professional support. And each one of these three delivery models was either using high-end hearing aids with premium features or low-end hearing aids with basic features, which is how we ultimately get to six total groups. In the four over-the-counter service delivery models, which remember give you either partial support with a hearing care professional or no support with a hearing care professional, they actually took prescription hearing aids and made them perform like an over-the-counter hearing aid. Remember that point because I'll be coming back to that later. The goals of this study were to really evaluate what impact these service delivery models had on individuals using both prescription hearing aids and over-the-counter hearing aids, as well as to determine if technology level had anything to do with these individuals' performance. And the results will probably surprise you. After four years of meticulously evaluating performance outcomes for each one of these groups, the biggest thing that these researchers noticed is that prescription hearing aids fit by a hearing care professional following best practices had a significant improvement in overall patient performance compared to any one of the over-the-counter hearing aid groups. They also identified no statistically significant differences between the over-the-counter hearing aid groups that had some professional support and the over-the-counter hearing aid groups that had no professional support. On top of that, 
participants who received the best practice audiologic care using prescription hearing aids were three times more likely to report using their hearing aids frequently compared to the over-the-counter hearing aid groups. Another thing they found that might surprise you a little bit is that as long as best practices were followed with these individuals using prescription hearing aids, there was no statistically significant difference between individuals using the high-end hearing aids and the low-end hearing aids for these individuals who had mild to moderate hearing loss. Okay, so now that you have all the highlights, what are my thoughts on the results of this study? Well, I've got a few. First and foremost, this was an extremely impressive study considering the fact that it spanned over the course of four years and it happened to go on during COVID. I can tell that the researchers did their absolute best trying to evaluate the differences between prescription and over-the-counter hearing aids, despite the fact that over-the-counter hearing aids didn't technically exist yet. This led me to my second thought, which was, how the heck did they have any idea how to set up a prescription hearing aid to function like an over-the-counter hearing aid when the over-the-counter hearing aid guidelines were not yet established. I mean, basically nobody actually knew what an over-the-counter hearing aid was yet. The final guidelines for over-the-counter hearing aids were not finalized until October of 2022, which was three years after they started this study. Now, I've essentially been evaluating over-the-counter hearing aids since October of 2022, and I can tell you that even the most basic prescription hearing aid in the world will outperform any over-the-counter hearing aid. So I'm not really sure what they did to make these prescription hearing aids act more like an over-the-counter hearing aid. They were still prescription hearing aids. To me, this just means that it's that much more impressive that we saw such a significant difference in performance between the prescription hearing aid groups and the over-the-counter hearing aid groups, considering that the over-the-counter hearing aid groups we're still using prescription hearing aids. This definitely speaks to how important professional care is and best practice professional care is on the overall performance with whatever devices you use. Of course, if you wanna learn more about what these actual best practices are, I will have this video linked down in the description for you if you wanna check it out after this video. My third key takeaway was the significant increase in hearing aid usage for the prescription hearing aid groups versus the over-the-counter hearing aid groups. It was three times more likely that the prescription hearing aid users receiving best practice audiologic care reported using their hearing aids frequently. And as you know, the more frequently you wear your hearing aids, the better your performance is going to be. Now, I think that this was likely due to two main reasons. Either the audiologist for these prescription hearing aid users was providing a lot of support and encouragement to wear their hearing aids more often, or the overall performance improvement of these hearing aids that were fit and program following best practices provided that much more auditory benefit that individuals wanted to wear them more. Either way, increased hearing aid usage is always a good thing when it comes to optimizing your performance with your hearing aids, not to mention all of the research that's out there that supports hearing aid use in order to slow down the rate of cognitive decline. My fourth takeaway is that while prescription hearing aid users did outperform over-the-counter hearing aid users, over-the-counter hearing aids did still provide some support for individuals who have mild to moderate hearing loss, whether they received some audiologic support or no audiologic support. This supports the premise that using over-the-counter hearing aids, whether you have support or not, is better than nothing at all, and is definitely a good option as a stepping stone to get yourself into prescriptive level care. Although this could be due to the fact that these were not actually over-the-counter hearing aids, they were technically prescription hearing aids set up like over-the-counter hearing aids, whatever that really means. And the fifth key takeaway is that this study showed that there was no statistically significant difference between high-end hearing aids with premium features and low-end hearing aids with basic features. While this result is not necessarily that new, considering that the late Dr. Robin Cox had already identified this over a decade ago, and the fact that a lot of these digital features and premium level hearing aids really start to shine when someone has more than a mild to moderate level hearing loss, and there were none of those individuals included in this study. What would be really interesting to see is a study that compared high-end hearing aid technology and low-end hearing aid technology in individuals who have a moderate or worse level hearing loss and who have a variety of different complex listening situations that they regularly encounter. Not to mention, one of the biggest challenges that researchers have in identifying whether premium technology is better than basic level technology is the sensitivity in the questionnaires that we use to determine performance outcomes. If we do not have questionnaires that are sensitive enough to identify these differences between premium technology and basic level technology, it's not going to be possible for us to actually identify the subjective difference. Overall, I think it's very clear that this study shows that professional audiologic care by an audiologist who follows best practices 
things is significantly more important than if you use over-the-counter hearing aids or prescription hearing aids and what technology level of prescription hearing aids you use. Since the creation of the over-the-counter hearing aid guidelines, I think a lot of people were expecting over-the-counter hearing aids to perform just as well as prescription level hearing aids for individuals with mild to moderate hearing loss, and that just isn't the case. I also think that this research is going to lead to other studies that use legitimate over-the-counter hearing aids now that we know what over-the-counter hearing aids are and compare that performance to these prescription hearing aids. As of right now, it appears as though over-the-counter hearing aids are functioning as more of a bridge to prescriptive level care for individuals with mild to moderate hearing loss who are just looking for a little bit of a boost. And then once they get to a point where they feel like they want to hear their absolute best, they end up making that transition. This is probably why over-the-counter hearing aid adoption rates are so low and the return rates are so high for individuals who try these devices but they don't get a whole lot of benefit and they end up sending them back to the manufacturer for a refund. At the end of the day, if you struggle with your hearing, you have two clear options in front of you at this point. Your first option is to go the over-the-counter hearing aid route and get whatever benefit you can possibly get out of those devices. Or you can use a prescription hearing aid like the Starkey Edge AI from a hearing care professional who provides you with best practice audiologic care. The only wrong choice is to not treat your hearing loss at all.